The perfect practice of perfect knowledge is the avatarically given divine way of Adidam. Part 6 There must be an intensive process preceding the perfect practice of perfect knowledge and most ultimate divine self-realization because the energies of the body-mind and also otherwise the psychomotive activity of attention are both moving in habitual patterns many of which are self-caused arising from the individual's characteristic manner of coinciding with the apparent world of cosmic nature and with various collections, collectives of human beings. The self-contraction is operative moment to moment in the waking and dreaming states and the energies of the body-mind emerge from deep sleep. The energies of the body-mind do not appear, do not disappear by going to sleep. Going to sleep, even though it coincides with a kind of freedom from bondage, still rests in the bed of psychophysical energies and, therefore, the course of body's latent potential inevitably results in the recurrence of the states of dreaming and waking. Only real practice undoes the psychophysical energies of bondage. The practice that coincides with transcendental spiritual blessing, profoundest devotion, real transmission, real self-discipline, endurance of often intense difficulties, going beyond self, becoming a self-ruin in the course of practice, until by uncommandable grace there is revelation which is undeniable and absolute and which never could have been thought before. There are various yogic indicators of this process, which I have described to you in my Divine Avataric Teaching Word. These yogic signs are matters of extraordinary profundity. Such signs may be relatively easy for me to put into phrases that seem to make sense. As a result, when my devotees hear or read such descriptions of mine, they may, in their imitativeness and ego possession, imagine that they are actually involved in the, those profundities, which, in fact, they are not. The perfect practice of the perfect knowledge way, or reality with Adidam, rests upon profundities which are inconceivable and which require the most serious and intensive practice in advance. A devotional practice, a practice of self-discipline, a practice that matures into the true hearing of me and the real seeing of me, a practice that demonstrates true surrender, searchless beholding of me, utter openness to my real transcendental spiritual self-transmission, such that the transcendental spiritual condition that enables the perfect practice of perfect knowledge is established by means of my divine avataric transcendental spiritual grace, and not merely as a matter of intellectual or philosophical argument. The energies or patterns of body-mind and of attention must be loosed from bondage. The life of devotion serves self-discipline and meditation, in which all of that bondage is loosed, involves the fulfilment of my instructions in various forms, which cover all the aspects of life. When the ego memory is undone, all the energies of the body-mind return to the true heart. Until those energies are resolved in the true heart, there is no perfect practice of perfect knowledge. The perfect practice of perfect knowledge is inherently 
in the root current of transcendental spiritual love bliss. All the preliminaries to the perfect practice of perfect knowledge are inherently in the body-mind. The perfect practice of perfect knowledge does not exercise the body-mind because there is nothing that needs to be returned to the place of origin if everything is already returned to the place of origin. All the motives of attention and all the energies of body-mind that bind you, divert you, distract you, command you, move you, direct your life, must become subject to the discipline of my instruction and you must be turned to me in all of that rightened life so that the otherwise flying energies the psycho-motivated energies of tension fall into heart communion with me. By tendency, the energies of the body-mind go out, directed toward their purposes. When there are no longer any such purposes, the practice has become perfect. The yoga of the root current of transcendental spiritual love bliss requires the fall of all the psychophysical energies into the heart space. The resolution cannot be accomplished by the mind. Only in the absolute transcending of mind does this event occur. How is this revolution to be resolution to be accomplished? Not by seeking, but by finding me, locating me, heart recognizing me, turning to me by whole bodily invocation of me, moment to moment, always living by my instruction. Relinquish the memory of this world, and in due course, be my perfect practice devotee. As my perfect practice devotee, you remain in the world. Where else are you going to go? My perfect practice devotee remains in the world, but not as a mummer. My perfect practice devotee may yet seem to be a mummer to any ordinary view because the body moves and talks and does as bodies do. Nevertheless, as my perfect practice devotee, you will not be a mummer because all of the faculties will be turned to me and the life lived will be right life, not merely the life of a dramatic participant the ego world. Truly the ego world is not happening in your case, just as it is not happening in mine. You simply do not know this truth. You have not realised this to be the case. In the domain of cosmic happening, the energies of the body-mind are moving out of the true heart into the domain of body-mind. And there is an identity that coincides with that movement. As soon as any moment of perception arises, there is the presumption of a separate me. Thus, from your perspective, there is always this named separate self experiencing that me identity, being that, talking that, thinking that, suffering that and so on. But it is not so, obviously not. You will, I presume, always re-notice the witness consciousness whenever I mention it. No matter what arises, even now, right now, you are only the witness consciousness. It is not that you are actively witnessing in the sense of functionally observing or following things and events, or even in the sense of simply being attentive. Rather, you are merely the inherently actionless and inherently egoless witness consciousness. Not separate, not related, not other and not different. Simply that. Such is the case right now. Even in, my, even in any moment when some words start flowing or some bodily sensations start arising. The automaticity of the psychophysical energies generating the body-mind notion of self by name as an identity, is completely non-necessary. Once there is established 
in the true divine and a causal self-nature, self-condition and self-state. In the true heart, the root of the divine current of transcendental spiritual love bliss. Then the automaticity of ego I, or the presumption of separate and separative self-identity, no longer occurs. When that establishment is so, then the separate I does not fly out of the true heart. The separate I simply does not arise. The description I have just given is fundamentally incomprehensible, except in the case of the most perfect divine self-realization. In fact, if the sense of separate self disappeared as a merely mechanical procedure, you would literally go mad. Mere loss of ego identity is associated with feelings of great stress and madness, but realization is not of that nature. Most perfect divine self-realization is a transcendental spiritual event, a divine yogic event. In truth, most perfect divine self-realization is simply reality itself. Most perfect divine self-realization is not disturbing. On the contrary, it is all love bliss and utterly free. Most perfect divine self-realization liberates all the energies of the body-mind. In most perfect divine self-realization, all binding motions vanish. In that most ultimate awakening, if the apparent world arises, it is inherently divinely self-recognized. Such is the only by me revealed and given seventh stage awakening. Everything is simply tacitly divinely self-recognized without the arising of a separate self. Whatever is apparently arising is inherently divinely self-recognized to be nothing but a transparent or merely apparent and non-necessary and inherently non-binding modification of the self-radiance of the divine conscious light itself, which is the self-existing divine self-condition itself. The divine conscious light, the bright, is one only. It is not consciousness and light. It is one only, indivisible, absolute divine. The divine conscious light is not merely inward. The divine conscious light is all and all and transcends all and all. The perfect condition is, I assure you, it is. I affirm to you with absolute certainty, it is. Real a causal God is. Not the God of mythology, but the God that is reality. The causal divine truth is. Reality itself is. I have proven this by means of my absolute divine avataric self-submission. I submitted myself without the slightest preconception of what would happen to every ordeal and humiliation in order to prove the truth. Without a doubt, without an argument, I have done so. I can reveal the causal divine self-nature, self-condition and self-state to you by direct silent transmission. If you truly turn, O oh bodily, to me, I cannot merely send it to you in a package, but I can do this divine avataric revelation work for the sake of my devotees and all the world. My doing of this divine avataric work now and forever hereafter is both constant and silent. The self-radiant bright power of my own divine avataric self-revelation and the self-existing state of my own most perfect divine self-realization bring my devotees to me and now and forever hereafter. Do the transmission work that priorly accordingly and most perfectly awakens them. Thank you, beloved. Da. Da. Thank you.
your silent transmission. Just simply turn to you and all else is forgotten. Yes, be in the world, but not of the world. No longer a mummer. In that heart communion 